So last Sunday, we got done with church and we started driving home, Robin and me. And we got onto Kansas Expressway, started heading south. Our home, we live with mom, and she lives in the south part, side of Springfield. We came over the James River Freeway, and we were going to continue on straight to get down to Republic Road, and a car pulled up next to us to turn onto the James River Freeway going east. And it was Carl and Linda Etheridge. Y'all know them. They're a wonderful part of our church family here. They're, they're Royal Rangers International missionaries. And, and so they pulled up next to me, and I turned and saw them. And Robin said, hey, look, at there's Carl and Linda. And Carl and Linda were looking at us. I think we stuck our tongues out at each other, you know, and, and did all those type of things that we do. And then we had to go forward, so I called them on the phone. And I said, hey, Carl, I said, you almost sideswiped me there, you know. And he said, yeah, well, I noticed you were driving erratically. You know how you, you, you kind of uh, have fun with one another. And, and so then I said, uh, you know, uh, I think Joey was in the back of the car too, if I remember right. But, but I, um, I asked Carl, I said, do you always drive? He goes, yep, I'm the, I'm the king of the car. He said, I, you know what, me too. I, this is my car, and I'm going to be the one in control. And, and then I heard pipe up, uh, Linda said, yes, and, and I'm the... I'm the passenger princess, she says, <laughs> Carl's wife. And uh, then we talked some more banter, and, uh, and we drove on and hung up. But I have a question here. Men, how many of you men are the king of your car? You're the one that drives. You, the, in your family, in your marriage, how many of you are? Don't be embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something. I see some wives <laughs> trying to shove their hands up. Okay. Uh, there's something about being in control that uh, it's not just a guy thing. I think, in fact, it's a human thing to be the king of your own destiny. That strain of human uh, personality and attributes, it just it runs through all of us. And the Bible has something to say about this kingship where we're in Charge And so I'll, as you were told already, 1 Samuel chapter 8, we're going to go to God's word. We're going to let God's word impact our lives. In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up with me. You were just standing and talking, but we're going to do it here again. We're going to stand, and you have your Bible in your hand. We always encourage you, please bring a paper Bible. Just get in the habit of it. It's a good thing to do. And get a highlighter, and we, and we mark things up. It's, a, it's, it's good. If you don't have your Bible, of course your phone will work on that also. But we have this here because here's, here's what's happening. When, it, when we talk about being a king, and, and our passage here, the last week of our series, is regarding uh, Israel demanding a king. They wanted a king. We're going we're gonna to look at that here in a moment. But when we talk about kings and kingship, there's a, there's a lot that the Bible has to say about it. When it talks about love, the Bible mentions love 700 times. When it talks about faith, the Bible mentions faith 500 times. But the word king and kingdom occur over 2,500 times. It, it runs through all the Bible and the, those historical sections where it talks about the king was the king of this and his father was the king of that. There's about a thousand times it mentions it there. So we're talking throughout the whole Bible. It just permeates everything. The Bible has something to say about being king. So let's hold our Bibles in the air and we're going to say it together. It's right up here on the screen. Say it in a strong voice with me. This is truth. This is life. This is God's word. Lord God, we hold it up. We're about to look at it. I can speak all I want. If your word is not revealed, if your word doesn't speak to us, it means nothing. So God, we give you permission now. Speak to us, King Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. 1 Samuel chapter 8. This passage here, we learned last week that Samuel, he's the last of the judges. He was just a young boy. Pastor Tim showed us that. And he was the, the, the last of Israel's judges, a long-term judge. Also, he was a prophet and a priest. The book of Judges ends with a sad statement. You can go and look at it yourself later on in chapter 21. It ends and says, In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. And then we come here to 1 Samuel chapter 8. And as you hold that in your hands, this is a turning point 
in the narrative of Scripture. As we've been going through this year in the Bible Engagement Project, and we started in Genesis chapter 1, and we're making our way all the way through to the end of the Bible. Here in Samuel, 1 Samuel 8, there's a turning point. Before this, Israel was ruled by God as their king with judges under him. In fact, there were, if you look in the book of Judges, there were 12 judges listed there. And then in Sam, 1 Samuel, there was Eli and then Samuel himself. And then Israel rejected Samuel, and we see he rejected God himself and demanded a king, which made Samuel the last judge of Israel. So look with me, if you would now. 1 Samuel chapter 8. We see in verse 5, the elders of Israel come before Samuel and they say, look, we'll see it in a moment, the passage of scripture, but look, you're old now. Your sons are not like you. Now it says, give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. As we read this historical narrative about the people of God, Israel, Remember that all that is written in the Old Testament, the New Testament says, is for us to see and to learn and to grow from. The people of God in this passage are a type for you and for me. And they are coming before Samuel, God's representative, and they're saying, give us a king like all the other nations have. Put control in human hands like others do. God does not want his people to be like others. But oh, how it just burns in our hearts that somehow we can fit into this world. Somehow we can be like others around us. Somehow we won't stick out too much. Somehow we won't be considered peculiar or different than others. We wanna just go with the flow if possible. We would like to have a king, someone human that we can recognize. We wanna have control ourselves just like the other nations. In fact, I want you to take that passage that's on the on the screen there and highlight that. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. And then go down two verses and we see it says, God replying to Samuel who's wondering, what do I do, Lord? And God says this, do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. Highlight that passage there. They are rejecting me, not you. They wanted, they don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. The Lord is revealing a truth here regarding this. It's not Samuel they were rejecting. It was God himself. God as their king, the people of God were rejecting him. In fact, he says, ever since I brought them out of Egypt, they've continually abandoned me and followed other gods. Now listen, I want you to hear this. This may not sound like some of you. Some of you, are, you're so wonderful. You've been following Christ since you were two years old, whatever the case may be. But a lot of us can resonate with this. There's some of you seated here. This talks about you. It talks about me continually turning from God, continually going our own way, continually with wanting to have it like the other nations around us, continually not trusting God, continually wanting to have control in our own hands. The people of Israel here, they are you and they are me. And notice what God says to them at the beginning here. Do everything they say to you, for they're rejecting me. Did you realize that God, the all-powerful creator of the universe, he allows us free will? He does not say, oh, you are going to do this whether you want to or not. No, he wants a people who will love him because they choose to love him. He wants a people who will follow him because they have chosen to do that. And when the Israelites turn from him, he says, okay, let them do whatever they're going to do. He does that the same in you, in my life, and your life. Let me tell you, some of you are seated here right now, and you're going your own path. And God is not going to stop you. He will not overcome. He will not d- d- make you, force you to do his will. You have free will. That's wh- how he created us. But he loves you and cares about you. But he is going to let you do what you do. And the consequences that we suffer until we're drawn back to him. They demanded a king. 
It's the very essence. Listen here. It's the very essence of who we are as humans. It's the very curse of the human race. Instead of having God as a leader, we want to rule ourselves. And from the beginning of the Bible to the very end, it's all about us fighting his rule of our life and trying to do it our own way. From the Old Testament to the New Testament to the very end of time, it is the human condition. And some of you here today, you're going through something hard and you're mad at God. You're ticked off because he didn't save you in this situation or he didn't help in your marriage or someone that you love passed away or things haven't turned out as you wanted and you're mad at God. Open your eyes, look at the scripture and see that what is happening here in 1 Samuel chapter 8, it is who you and I are. We demand our own king. We want to be king ourselves from the very beginning. Genesis 1 and 2, all is perfect. Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve in the garden. They choose to go in their own way. They believe a lie that was was over what God said was the exact opposite of that. They refuse to obey God. From the beginning of Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation, if you were to look in Revelation 20, you should check it out. Here there's a millennial reign, a thousand years. Jesus reigns on the earth. Jesus is here in his supernatural form. He's on the earth, and we serve him as kings and priests. We're ruling over the earth, and all the presence of God himself is here, and the nations see it and are able to be visibly represented Christ in them right there on the earth. And at the end of the thousand years, the nations gather together and they rebel against God once again. You know, some of us, you think, well, if God only were to reveal himself, if God wouldn't be behind this veil, as it were, and he has us walk by faith, if only we could see God, oh, well, surely all of us would serve God. Well, I read in Revelation chapter 20 a different story, that they saw Jesus for a thousand years, and they still chose to rebel. They turned against him. It's the condition of our human nature. Archie came up with a prophetic word just this morning, and I wrote it down after he gave it here, that the word that he had this morning was that we have hearts of stone. Did you hear that? Did you hear what the Lord, the Holy Spirit was saying? We have hearts of stone. Don't strive for your own rulership. Don't do that. Just be who God created you to be, and that's under his lordship where God is king in our lives. Now we look and we continue on in Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 8. That Samuel turns to the people of Israel and he says to them, Hey, we will do what you're saying. God will allow you to do this, but you need to understand, here's the consequences when you are your own king. Here's what's going to happen. And he listed all the things that would happen. And in fact, they did happen because it's true. God's word is true that you'll become slaves to that king, that these are gonna, your, your livelihood is going to be taken from you. It's going to be hard on you. And he says in verse 18, when that day comes, you'll beg for relief from this king. And that's the story of our lives also. Every one of us, as we go through life, until we learn to come under the complete rulership of Jesus Christ, we struggle, oh, so much in giving it over to him. We keep it for ourselves. We're going to be the king of ourselves. I'm driving this car. You be the passenger princess, but I am going to be driving this vehicle. I'm in control. And the consequences are as logical as the scripture lays it out, that we become miserable and we cry out for relief. And look in verse 19 and 20. They say, even though Samuel warns them, even so, we still want a king. We want to be like the nations around us. That's our story, my friends. It's my story. I grew up in church. I'm one of those ones who accepted Jesus somewhere around four or five years of age. I can't remember that. Let me tell you, I've been running from God in various forms all my life. As a kid being a rascal and then a teenager and trying to figure things out and going into college and called in the ministry. And yet still there's the parts of us. Listen here. 
We don't mean it. Pastor Josh said it. We, 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 we joke about it, but we are serious about it. We're just a bunch of messed up people here. Every one of us, every one of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know that, right? The most precious seniors and little grandmas of our church that we could think could do no wrong. Oh, every one of us is just messed up. We need Jesus as king. We need his grace given to us. And so we look in 1 Samuel chapter 12. Go over just a couple chapters here. 1 Samuel chapter 12. God reveals that Saul is going to be the king over Israel. And there's this process as, as Samuel presents Saul to the people. 1 Samuel chapter 12. And, and it, verse 12 tells us this. Samuel speaks. He says, but when you were af afraid of Nahash, the king of Ammon, you came to me. And you said you wanted a king to rule over you even though the Lord your God was already your king. That God himself was reigning over Israel, but Israel chose, the people of God chose their own king. So listen here. There's some of you here today, you're not serving Jesus Christ. You're not even sure this, this, this group of people here and were a little loud during worship, it made you a little uncomfortable maybe. And then there are some, several people, a young lady, an older person, they came up and they were giving some prophetic words. And what's that all about? And you're trying to figure out this whole thing about Jesus Christ. You need to decide if he's going to be the king of your life or not. I'm going to give you opportunity for that a little bit later in the service. But I want to tell you this. This message here is not just for those who are still trying to decide whether Jesus will be their Lord and Savior. This message is for all the rest of us. This story here, my friends, is about the people of God. We're not talking some foreign nations trying to make a decision. We're not talking about those that were, that were far off. This was the people of God, chosen by God. That means every one of us here in this auditorium and auditorium too, and those who are listening, every one of us who are Christians and, and are Christ followers, this story is about you and me. We struggle to have Jesus be completely the king of our lives. I won't ask you to raise your hands. How many struggle with this? I'm not going to ask you because because I would bet that half of us would be afraid to even raise our hands to acknowledge that truth. It's the human condition to give over to Jesus the rule of our life as king because we want kings to rule over us even though the Lord our God is already our king. And through this then, verse 13, look at it in your Bible. It says, all right, here's the king you've chosen. You asked for him. That's the words of scripture. And then they suffered and lived the consequence of that from that point forward. Just like you and I, as we refuse to obey God, as we go our own way, either in a major way in your life or just the very nature as we're serving God, even for those of us in ministry, and we're serving the Lord, but there are areas of our life where pride or we are reluctant to, to, to the prompting of the Holy Spirit to follow it, and we go our own way. It's the condition of the human race, just like all the nations around us. You see, God wanted a king for the people of Israel. His plan was for that king to be the one who had been decided upon before the creation of the world. That was Jesus Christ who would come. In fact, turn with me to Matthew chapter 4 because we're going to see Jesus in this passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter 4, let's hear those pages flipping in the New Testament. Before God created the universe, he had already planned that there would be a people who would need a Savior, who would need a King. And Jesus Christ, his Son, was chosen before creation to come and to be our king. In Matthew chapter 4, we, word, we read in verse 17, Jesus is beginning his ministry, and he says this, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. 
the kingdom of heaven. Jesus comes and he says, first and foremost, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, you know what a kingdom is. That means someone who's in charge. That means there's a king, a king who's absolute, the king who says this is how it's going to be. And those subjects in that kingdom, they follow what that king says. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is near. Today, I say it to you. The kingdom of heaven is near for us. If you are not serving Jesus, wow, you are close to the kingdom of heaven. But my friend, it is a kingdom. That means there's a king, and that's Jesus Christ. And for all the rest of us, I'll tell you this, the kingdom of heaven is near for us also. We need to come under the the kingship of Jesus Christ in every part of our lives, even as we struggle to fully express that we are subject to him. So tell me, how do we live out that the kingdom of heaven is near to us? How do we as Christ followers live out the kingdom of God right here on earth, right in your life and mine? Let me give you some steps on how we can do that. And I'll stop right here. Lord Jesus, help us in this moment that we don't think this is for just those who aren't serving you right now. God, in this moment, Holy Spirit, strengthen our minds and focus our minds to realize this is you, Holy Spirit, speaking to us about Jesus fully being king in every one of us who are the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So here's what I want you to do. Turn two chapters over from where we are, Matthew chapter 4. Turn over to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to give you a tool that you can use as we're walking. Till the day you die, you're going to be struggling to express that Jesus is fully king of your life. When you die and are in the presence of Jesus in heaven, it will become complete, his reign over every part of your life. Until then, we are struggling to walk and learn to grow under his reign as king. So here's a step that you can take, Matthew chapter 6. Jesus knows our heart. He knows our resistance to his kingdom. That's why when the disciples came to him and said, Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. He gives us an example in Matthew chapter 6. I want you to look at it with me here. It's called the Lord's Prayer, or I call it the Disciples' Prayer. He gave it to the disciples that they are to pray it. Look it up with me right here. I want, in particular, we're just going to look at verse 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. It says this, your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you see that there? In fact, I want you to highlight that if it isn't already highlighted. Your kingdom come. Highlight that. Jesus said, here's what I want you to do. You want to follow me? You want to be a servant of the Lord? You want to be one who is, who is under my reign as king? Then here's what you pray every day. Jesus Your kingdom come. There's something about praying, and I encourage you when you pray, find times and places where you can pray audibly. Every day I pray out loud. I I let my lips, my words speak through my mouth. I say this passage as well as the entire disciples' prayer and, and, of course, other parts of my spiritual discipline of prayer. But I pray it out loud. Oh, Jesus, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, it's interesting what Jesus says there, that, that the, we are declaring with our lips. It's the imperative form of the verb. It's a command verb. We're saying, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, in heaven, when Jesus gives the word or God the Father says the word, how many of you believe that the angels immediately act upon that word? Absolutely. Absolutely. His reign is absolute in heaven. And Jesus said, here, I'm giving you a picture. I'm opening up the window. I'm letting you see into the spiritual realm. You have the the power of your voice to speak blessing upon yourself and the truth of what it should be. Not like the other nations, not being our own king. We want it to be all nice. Look at little gold crowns. and Oh, he says, if only your eyes could be seen. My intention all along was that it was Christ who would reign over your life. Oh, if you could only see it like it is in heaven, so it would be in on earth. That we would pray, your kingdom come, just like in heaven. That means it's absolute in my life. I'm not here to say, you be the king of my life because now I know I'm going to get to heaven and you're going to probably make things nice for me and you'll fix things up and I'll have joy in my life. And so for that reason, I mean, no, you are the king. Your 
reign is absolute in my life. God, help us that your kingdom come and your will will be done. Matthew 28, verse 18. You can mark it to look it up later and you could highlight it. But Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority has been given to me. That means we need to give up our authority. We need to step back from the steering wheel and say, you know what, Jesus, you're in charge. I'm giving it over to you. So when Jesus says, your kingdom come, here's, here's a tool I want to give to you, my friends, as you're growing in his kingship in your life. First of all, pray that every day out loud. Jesus says, this is how you should pray. Let's do it, my friends. Let's pray it every day. And, and don't go over quickly over this passage. This is the passage. It's at the very beginning after saying we give praise to you, hallowed be your name. The first thing Jesus says is do this, your kingdom come. And so I encourage you with your voice out loud that you would pray that every day let it be. I love my times of prayer because it flows throughout the entire day. What I have to pray, and it's, I'm disciplined in that, I pray through the Lord's Prayer. There's the other components, the daily dose, all these components. And as I'm praying, I'm able to pray, and then there's an, a meeting that I have, and then it comes to another time. I'm driving somewhere. I have a time uh, available. Then I am able to pray again, and I know where I left off. I can continue praying. Let me tell you here, my friends, if, if you come and, you're, and you have a time, you say, oh, I, I need to pray. What do I pray about here? Man, you're, you're taking very... Not very seriously. You're slacking in when it comes to the discipline of prayer. God has told us this is how we should pray. We need to take that on, and we need to start living it out. I rejoice for myself. I can pick up. I know where I ended, and I'm going to just continue praying. And so praying without ceasing is not an issue for me because God's word says it. I'm going to do it. I'm believing it. When Jesus says, your kingdom come, the name of God that I attribute to that is Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Rohi, which is the Lord our shepherd. Would you say Jehovah Rohi with me? Jehovah Rohi. It's the name of God. And it means the Lord our shepherd. Say that. The Lord our shepherd. The Lord our shepherd. Sometimes we think of God and we think, okay, I serve God and, and God is, but, but God, it seems so far away. I mean, the very nature, it's the spiritual realm. It is behind a curtain. It's hard to understand. That's why it's a walk of faith. That's why God in the Bible gives us these these word pictures for us to grasp it and understand the very term king we can grasp okay it's the king he gets to say how it goes the other is the lord our shepherd that the shepherd how many sheep go to the shepherd and say hey you know what i know how what i'm doing i just need you every now and then not one sheep has ever said that they aren't even capable and my friends, if only we knew how incapable we are of trying to rule our lives. We are just like the Israelites in 1 Samuel 8. And the warnings of God there, this is not going to go well for you. And look at our lives. It doesn't go well. But when we say, you are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, Jesus, you're in charge. And just like the shepherd knows best for the sheep, so too now in our lives, God knows best. For our lives. So I want you to say this. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, you're in charge. And we live that out in our lives. And as we do that, then God does miracles in us. You know, we say Jesus is king, but we, we, we kind of mean that. I mean, we, 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 those of us following Christ, we do mean it, but we kind of pull back. We have caveats, and we, and we, and we have areas where we, we don't really give it over to him. Oh, if only we could have him be our shepherd. And the sheep just simply goes wherever the shepherd says. And Jesus, in this passage, he's teaching us something very important. We honor God by calling him by his name, and then we proclaim the establishment of his kingdom in our lives, and we know this is, in fact, a central truth. It's the very success of our Christian walk is dependent upon us living out our ability to live out this one sentence. Our carnal nature screams, I'm the king, and Jesus says, here's what you are to say, this life-changing truth. God, your kingdom come. You're my shepherd. You're my king. You're in control. Now, that's life transforming. Listen, yesterday I was with Robin. Brandon and Anna are on a ministry trip, and so we have the 
two granddaughters, oldest granddaughters, and one of them had a birthday party with a friend, and so we went to the Republic Aquatic Center. Some of you have been there, and, it, and what a neat place, man, all this neat water stuff. And, and as I was standing there during the birthday part and their opening gifts, I was looking across the chain link fence, and they're doing all this construction there. You know what they're adding there? It's a lazy river. You've, you've heard of lazy rivers. One of my favorite things to do when I go to a hotel or whatever, you get on an inner tube or, and, and you just lay on it and, 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 and then it just the water just, you just float along with the water. And it's so relaxing. Have you ever done a lazy river? You're all looking at me cross like That's right. It's just, it's so neat because you just float along. It's comfortable. Wow. And some of us as Christians, that's what we want our Christian walk to be. We want it to be comfortable. We want to just float along. Oh, it's so nice, the sun. It's so nice, this water's so warm. This is so comfortable. We want our walk to be that way. You know, Jesus didn't die to make us comfortable. Jesus died to make us dangerous. He wants us to do something with our life. He's the king, and he summons us as his army, and he says, I am going to use you. You are here for a purpose. Oh, let's not just be comfortable. Let me tell you, if we're willing to step out beyond the realm that we know, the greatest adventures lie just beyond the boundaries of safety. Let's not play it safe. Let's go for it. He's our king. He's our God. I mean, Justin was mentioning here, our, our missionary this morning, the first step as we're going to serve God is, is the call to surrender to Him. Oh, we need to surrender. So here's what we're going to do as we're closing. Up on the screen here, there's a list of some things that we can do in our lives that we can surrender over to God. Where we say, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, you be a king over. And I, I've listed some things here that we can, we can pray and we can just give over to God. I want to add one more to this list. That thing this last week that you've been fixated on, that thing this last week that's been keeping you up at night, or this thing this last week that you've struggled with or that you've been trying to figure out, that thing that you've been trying, and all of a sudden now, this moment, the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now, you've been king over that thing, you've been trying to figure it out. Now, today, you're going to give that thing, you're going to give it over to God. You're going to say, your kingdom come, you're the shepherd, I'm just a sheep. God, I give it over to you now. So I want everyone to stand. Here's my request of you. Musicians are just playing real quietly here this on, on the keyboard. But, you know, what a powerful thing to be able to say to God. You know what? I'm once again declaring you're the king of my life. Wow. Once again, I declare your kingdom come in my life just as it is in heaven. Be absolute in your reign in my life. Every Christian has a right to say that. And some of you, you're not a follower of Christ, but I'm telling you here, there's no better thing than to have him have the absolute reign of your life. And today could be your opportunity to be able to make him the king of your life. I'm going to ask the prayer leaders to come forward. And then for all the rest of us, you know, we got a couple minutes here before we close. Could it be that the king of glory would be worthy of us lifting our heads and giving him praise. Psalm 24 says that. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads that the king of glory may come in. Oh, Christians, let's let the king once again come into our lives. Let's surrender the areas of our life that we naturally always try to pull back into our own hands. Let's give it back to him. This will be a day of victory. And so here's what we're going to do. If you want to ask the Lord to be the king of your life. Please come up to these prayer leaders. They're going to pray with you. They'll give you direction on how to do that. All the rest of us, as many as you're willing to, would you be willing, even while I'm talking right now, don't wait till I whistle. Even as I'm talking, if you want to come up to the front here, we're going to say, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. I declare it once again. I'm going to say it from, from my lips. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. And as we do this, just a season of prayer. I'll close this in a moment. But in this season of prayer, we're going to just declare it, every one of us, those at home, you stand up on that, from that couch and you lift your hands and you tell them, auditorium two, we stand and we just declare it, oh God, right now, church, would you just start to pray now, here it is here, you start going through this and, and mention those areas, some of these, the Holy Spirit will re reveal to you, that's the one that you need to give up, you're not 
letting me be Lord in that area. You're not letting me be Lord in this area. We're going to let him be king now, and so we claim it. I'm going to pray, but you all just pray right now. We're just having keyboard because it is our opportunity here. Let's lift our voices to God. You can, you can, you can just give it out to him just as I'm doing right now. Lord Jesus, over this entire auditorium, an auditorium too, and around the world, we lift our hands and we declare to you, God, once again, I give you the driver's seat. Once again, I proclaim you are the shepherd. Jesus, you taught me every day to pray this because you knew every day I would fail. So I say it now for my life. Be king. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in my life. Continue just praying that right now, my friends, and just let it be the Holy Spirit speaks it into your life. God, in every one of these areas, you be king of my life. Be, be king of my marriage, Lord God, and of my family. God, of my thoughts and my body, Lord Jesus. Lord, of my desires and ambitions, God, I give it to you, your king. Churches, let it be that you pray that out right now. Let it be that you give it to him. Declare that he's the king. The enemy wants to say, oh, no, no, don't do it. Oh, why is he making you come up to the front? Why does he make you say it out loud? You don't need to do that. Just stand there with your arms folded. And I tell you this, you're being robbed of the joy of giving your kingship of your life over to Jesus. Don't let anyone rob you of that. Jesus has come. He didn't want to make you comfortable, man. He wants to make you dangerous for him. And when we're sold out to him and his kingship is absolute, we become dangerous to this world. God, we claim it right now. All my decisions, Lord, you be king over them. Or my hopes, Lord God, for my fears, Lord Jesus. Some are, of you are carrying fears in your life. They're the one part of your life that you get to be king because you hold those fears inside. Oh, let it go. How illogical. But we just want to be like the other nations. We right now say, God, we give it over to you. I give you over my fears, Lord God. You be king. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, Lord God. For my future, Lord Jesus, I give it over to you right now. All that you have planned for me, it's in your hands, Lord. I no longer need to be the driver. I let you be my shepherd. I let you be my king. Oh, we give you praise. And church, just lift our hands right now, would you? As we do this, Lord, we, give, we declare that you are the king. You are the king. You are the king, Lord God. Oh, we praise your name. You be King Jesus in my life. Break me from my ambitions and my selfish. Lord God, my vain conceit and all that the Bible shares, it's so true about us, Lord, how we try to hide it among us, each other. But God, we openly acknowledge it, God. You be king now. Reign over our lives. Let your will be done, God, not my will. Oh, how wonderful, how freeing to be able to say this right now. We give you the praise, church. Just give him praise right now. Lift your hands and tell him you're king. You're the shepherd. You're the one driving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Life 360 Chesterfield, for every one of us. No lazy river for us. We're not going to float around on an inner tube. So comfortable. No, God, you died to make us dangerous, so we lift our hands and say, God, please use me now. I'm a soldier in your army. Whatever you want to do, God, you're in control. You're in control. You're in control, Jesus. You are king. You are king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We st we, we're going to end in a moment, but right now, just, I, I pause here because there are several here right now. You're so fighting this. You, 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 if you weren't embarrassed about it, you would walk out right now before we even close. But that's the Holy Spirit is just prompting you. The enemy's lying to you. You just need to give it over to God. This is your moment right now. All you need to do is simply say, I don't know what I'm doing, Jesus, but I make you king of my life. I don't know what to do, but you do. You're the shepherd. I'm just a sheep, so I give it over to you right now. Oh, my friend, let it go and let God be king in your life. Lord Jesus, for those who are in ministry positions, those who are leaders, God, those in, in important positions, oh, I pray, God, that they will always let you be king, that even there, you're the one who reigns, you're the one, your will be done. We give it all over to you. Please, Jesus, we praise your name. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the, the glory. 
thank you, Lord God. Here's what I want us to do as we're closing. And when we close, and Nathaniel, and by the way, this is Nathaniel. Look up here. This is his last week with us. Remember I tell you we're, we're ascending church? <laughs> well, it happens a lot here. But Nathaniel and Noel, they're going, uh, and they're going to be ministering. They're going down to Branson and live in Branson. The church down there and Sight and Sound, there'll be, there'll be leaders there, and they'll be part of the Sight and Sound. So God's going to bless and use it. But uh, <laughs> praise God. Amen. So my last time to boss him around, when I, when I close and say, God bless you, then we'll, then we'll sing this song together about Christ being the firm foundation, and you'll be well uh, able to stay and pray as long as you want. But I want us to do this here as, as, as we close here. For every one of us, we, every day, I'm telling you, this is what God's word says, so live it out every day. Be praying the Lord's prayer. I, 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 can I be so bold as to say to you, if you're not doing that, I think that you're an heir. And now you can be mad at me and go look at God's word and see what Jesus says. This is how you should pray. Give us this day our daily bread. It is sure it's right. You wonder why you struggle when we're not even doing what Jesus said so clearly to do in scripture. Let's do it. I want to I encourage you in that. And here's what I want us to say together at the end of this service now here. And then you're going to be dismissed here. I want us to all say this in a real strong voice. I'm going to say a word. And you say it real loud in response. Okay, this is, this is interactive. And, and this is you speaking now with your mouth out loud the truth of God's word. So follow me now. Jesus, Jesus. You're, in charge. you're in charge. You are my shepherd. You are my shepherd. You are my king. king. And God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord God, that you now are that. We put you back on your throne every day because we tend to take you off. But every day we will put you back on there for that's your rightful place. Oh, God, thank you for today and the victories you've given us now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you go. Pray and sing as long as you want.